Greetings, hi, hello, welcome to an updated plant tour, grow light setup, yada, 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 tiny basement apartment, shebang. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done a plant tour. I think it's been since just after I moved into this apartment with Matt. Um, so it's been a while. I've made a lot of changes. I have different grow lights for the most part, different setup in general, plants have come in and out, etc. So I figured it would be worth showing you all what's going on. So I live in a basement apartment, like I said, there's like zero natural light that comes in. So everything is supplemented. I do have plants like in the windows that we do have, but they don't get a whole lot of light. It is west facing windows, but there's also a lot of plant growth around them because we are in a basement. Um, so I don't really rely on that. And therefore I had to learn about grow lights for the first time because I used to live in a townhouse that had east and west facing windows and my room was west facing. So I had a lot of lovely natural light. So it's been an interesting time and I figure we will go through that all. So I have plants in the living room and in the bedroom and that's it. That's like all there really is in this apartment. There's a tiny little kitchen and a tiny little bathroom, but the kitchen has a tiny, tiny, tiny little window. So it's all, all in these two rooms. So I guess we will start in the living room. That's where the majority of the plants are. Yeah. So let's head up. Behind me, you can see a lot of the plants and a lot of the lights. So let's go through the lights first. Right here is just a desk lamp, like a clip-on lamp, and it has like one of those GE grow lights, I think, in it. Like full spectrum plant. It's like specifically for plants. I can't remember what it's called. I'll see if I can find it and like throw it up on the screen. Above it, I have Barina LED lights. Um, I have two connected together and we actually mounted them on a chafe chamfer, chamfer strip, I think is what Matt called it, um, so that it's mounted at a 45 degree angle so that the light kind of comes up from above and the side so that the plants will kind of grow this way. Um, so that's up there. And here is the information about the lights, Brenna LEDs. I have the um, like warm yellow version. I think they had a cool white version and then also like a more pink version. Um, so I have the cool or the warm yellow and I really like them. The plants seem to like them too. My biggest issue with them is that for, it's nice, first of all, that they are modular so that you can connect multiple bars together and everything like that. However, the cord for it is so short that they all have to be connected to like extension cords to reach a plug. So that is my biggest beef with them. And I just didn't realize that when I was um, buying them from Amazon. Oh, my other biggest beef with them is that you can only get them on Amazon and I don't love supporting Amazon. So that kind of sucked. Over here, I have more of those GE light bulbs into a little lamp where I can redirect the lights. It feels a little overkill in here now to have all of these lights on. However, with this plant right here and then this shelf, which we'll get to, it does feel necessary to have these lights in addition to another two strips of those Barina. I do have slightly different grow lights in the bedroom, so I figure we'll go there next. Um, and then we'll actually talk about the plants. So in the bedroom, above this shelf, I still have Barina lights. These ones, the cord is long enough that it can actually reach down to this extension cord. This used to live inside the desk, but it can't anymore because of the way that it is. So in order to not have this like glowing red light at night, I actually have to just turn off the power strip. Um, to get the lights all off so that we can like fall asleep at night. Over here, the lights turned off because they are a button and I had to wrap the buttony thing in electrical tape because when the lights are off, this glows like bright blue and because we sleep in here, it's impossible to sleep. So I had to wrap it in tape. But these lights are most think um, they're by most think. Um, they do fine for the plants. However, I had another set of them and I just uploaded this plant video, uh, plant chores video a little bit ago and they had died. So I had two sets of these before I had the, the Barina ones. I had a set right here and I had a set up there. And so when I put these Barino lights up, I took the most think ones down and then just had them spare. And then the ones that had been here died. Like they just straight up, I don't know if they burnt out, like I don't know what happened. So 
they work, I guess. Um, the crappy thing about them is you do have to push a button to turn them on. So you can't like set them on a timer or anything. They do have a built-in timer. The built-in timer, I think you can do like four, six or eight hours, but you still have to turn them on every morning. It's not like you can plug them into like a wall timer or something like that. So that is kind of crappy. And then also like they, one of my sets like burned out after a year. So I don't know if I'd recommend them or not, but that's my review of them. <laughs> Um, so I guess now we'll actually get into the plants and we will restart in the living room. That is where I am not now and we will just move left to right. So let's go for it. Starting down low over here, we have my lovely, beautiful avocado tree. It is so tall. Here, let me show you how tall it is. Is this gonna show how tall it is? Okay. It's about waist high on me. And I'm 5'11", so the fact that it's waist high is pretty significant. It is in a pretty large pot, but it's also actually just very tall. So my avocado tree, next to it I have my small leaf angel begonia, angel wing begonia. I don't remember, I've learned what this was in the past and I just cannot remember for the life of me. So I have it right here. There's some new growth coming down from the bottom, which is awesome. I just recently put it over here next to this grow light from the desk lamp. Um, it lived over on the other side of the living room. So we'll see how it does here. I feel like it's kind of getting more light, kind of getting less light in certain spots. The avocado tree definitely shades it a decent bit, but the avocado tree also needs a lot of light. And then back behind both of them is my Raphnophora tetrasperma. I just repotted this in my last plant video and I have it supported on this plank, but it's not actually growing on the plank. And the plank isn't potted into the pot. It just balances on the ground back there and held up by Velcro tape. I love this Raphnophora tetrasperma. It's definitely one of my favorite plants. I just think it's so cool. I like the way that it grows, its growth pattern, its leaves are so fun. Um, yeah, I just love this Raphnophora. Above here, you can see, is it easier to see if I turn this off? Maybe. Above here, you can see I have a string of tears right here, and it is also one of my favorite plants. It's becoming more and more full. Um, I keep kind of cutting it. Once it gets any longer than here, I kind of just trim it so that it fills out. I'm trying to get it to fill out up top a little bit more, but that's been difficult. Um, because before, literally this last weekend, there was no plant or there was no light source from above. It was just this right here. So I'm hoping now that there's the light source coming from above, it's going to enjoy it and fill out more. Over here to the left, I have my black raven ZZ. Raven ZZ? Black raven ZZ? I can't even remember what the plant is actually called. I just moved this up here with the new light, um, so I'm hoping to get some new growth off of it this year because that was one of my plant goals for the year. Have not gotten any new growth yet, um, but it's up there. And I love the way it looks in that little elephant. It's actually a cookie jar and you can uh, you can see the nursery pot like poking through, but I still think it's really cute and beautiful. Okay, this is easier. Chair to stand on has been acquired. Back here is my Philodendron Camposport Tuanum and it is doing great. It's kind of starting to do the weird like Cinderella foot thing with some of the new leaves. I think just with how hot it's been, the humidity has just dropped, um, but it's doing great. I want to up pot it soon, but I'm waiting for cuttings that I had to um, root and then I'll pot it all up together because this thing popped roots out of the bottom of this nursery pot like immediately after getting planted. So <laughs> there's that. Here I have my Syndapsis pictus exotica, and I also have planted in it um, Scindapsis argirius. So I have them planted together just because I wanted to kind of consolidate plants. And I think they're really cute together. You have the slightly darker, smaller leaves of the argirius. The argirius plant that I put in there was quite small and I sprinkled it around the whole outside edges. So there's some over here, there's some back here and then way back here as well, instead of planting it all in one spot. Um, 
yeah. Scanassus pictus exotica was a wishlist plant of mine for so long before I got it. And I've not been having the easiest time with this plant. When I cut it up and try and propagate it and stuff, it's super successful, but it kind of like hits this like stagnant size. And so I'm hoping again, having this better light set up and potting it into a bigger pot, fresh soil, which I did somewhat recently. I'm hoping that will help it out. Over here is my uh, spider plant. There are two curly spider plants, one here and then one on that far side that you can't really see back there. And then just a traditional spider plant. Um, it does have some babies shooting off of it. I do have a hard time keeping this watered enough just because I honestly forget about it. It's not my favorite plant. It is technically Matt's. I'm the one who takes care of it. I would probably sell it and get rid of it, but he likes it. So we'll see if I fall back in love with it if I do a better job of taking care of it and with the the grow light and everything giving it more love over here hanging one of the reasons that i still want to have these grow lights on in the background is my giant burrows tail and there she is she's very long i can't remember exactly how long it was when we moved when i moved in here but i want to say it was maybe like to here it's been growing just fine in the basement. You can't really even see like a place where the leaves have maybe gotten like more stretched out and spaced out since moving down here. Um, but yeah, it does pretty well. The issue is that it's getting longer. Now it's easier to run into these because like they come down to like nipple height. <laughs> and so you kind of have to like bob and weave around it. Um, so that's a little bit of a, a tricky situation, but I love that plant. It's one of my favorites. I don't think I will ever get rid of it. I just love it so much. Then behind the burrow's tail, I have this plant shelf and I just moved my Pilea peperomioides out here this last week. It was in the bedroom, just kind of hanging out on the desk, but it's kind of going through this funky phase now where all of the leaves that were down here have started to flatten out instead of pointing straight up anymore. Um, so it's kind of looking a little bit funky, but there are some babies in the pot, which is amazing. And I love this plant. I'm so happy that it's doing so well and giving me these like big lovely leaves because I miss the mother plant so much. I talk about it all the time. And what is that on that leaf? And then, um, unfortunately, when I was house sitting a few weeks ago, my plants went without getting watered for like maybe three, four days too long because it was also during a heat wave. And so I did get some damage on the plant because of that. So that's a bit of a bummer, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not the end of the world. We still have lots of beautiful, beautiful leaves that are working their way out. Next to it, I have my philodendron mic hands, and it is doing pretty well. Um, it's putting out a lot of new growth and everything. Some of the leaves are becoming a more reasonable size. They're not all these teeny tiny ones anymore. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm, it's well on its way to achieving the uh, goal that I set for it this year, just to be a more full pot than what I had started with, which was teeny tiny. And then down here, I have my Black Pagoda lipstick plant. This plant is kind of suffering also from when I had underwatered my plants because of not being home and being ho at house sitting. Um, but it is putting out a decent amount of new growth and it looks pretty happy overall. I do really like this plant. I think this about is as long as the, uh, what are those called? Vines will get, I guess you call them vines. And then it just starts filling out. So I don't know, I like the way it looks. Then up here, I have a Hoya Wayetii, and it is putting off a decent amount of new growth as well, which is really exciting. Is that a pedungle? I don't think so. Then over here, I have a little propagation pot of a lot of cuttings from my, um, from my Marble Queen Pothos that I have at work. I took cuttings from all of the green leaves just to see if I could start, um, reintroducing variegation. And it looks like it's kind of working with some of them, but some of those new leaves are also quite green. So who knows? But yeah, I just figured, see what happens with that. Then I have this shelf over here, up to the left. Let's see if I turn this off again. I'll just do that light. Up to the left, I have my Peperomia Hope and it is doing great. This plant has taken a dive off of this shelf several times because of being so top heavy. So I actually put 
into the pot uh, a piton, <laughs> which is a climbing piece of climbing equipment. That's pretty heavy. It's like pure steel or iron. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's doing pretty well. There are some parts of it that suffered, again, due to underwatering and stuff, but it is putting off some new growth up top, so I'm happy about that. The chair I'm standing on is very squeaky, so I apologize. Next to it, I have my mixed pot of pothos. There's some golden pothos, some pothos and joy. Oh, that's not looking very happy. Um, and then just some like jade pothos, bas basically just reverted um, Marble Queen. I don't super love this plant. I like this part of the plant, but I don't really care that much about the golden pothos. And so I think I might separate them out and sell the rest of it, but keep this and propagate this to get a full plant of this. To the right of that is my Hoya pubicalix splash, and it is doing great. It's putting out so many new leaves, especially with the grow light above it now. It's doing amazingly. Um, this is my favorite leaf. It's so beautiful. It's like a half moon almost. Okay, I have to get off of my chair. And onto a tiny little bean bag. Up here is my Hoya linearis, which is doing pretty well. Um, I'm having a hard time keeping it watered enough, so I definitely need to pot it into a bigger pot. Um, however, the only bigger pots I have are terracotta, and I'm kind of worried about putting it into a bigger pot, but still having it be terracotta and it drying out and stuff, so I don't know. But it's doing pretty well. It's putting off a lot of new growth up there. Then to the right, I have my asparagus fern, which is just in this pot for the meantime. I really need to put it into a bigger pot. And it is going through its weird little cycle of like putting off a lot of new growth, and then the new growth kind of turns brown and starts dying, even though I've been doing a good job about watering it. But a lot of this new growth has happened just in the past couple days since putting it up under this grow light. So I think it's really happy with that. Then here I just have some propagations in water of Philodendron Capesportuanum and, um, what is this called? Raptophora tetrasperma. Over here is my Hoya Crimson Princess, and it's doing quite well. It's put off some new pretty pink leaves, which is awesome because for a while, the only leaves that were actually growing were this like reverted, unvarigated, um, what is this called, vine? Wow, I'm really struggling this morning. Um, but it's doing pretty well. I'm waiting for new growth to come off of this vine, which has never happened, or at least it hasn't happened in like a year or so. Down here on this little bookshelf is my large angel wing begonia, very large angel wing begonia. And in there, I also have potted that small wing, small leafed angel wing begonia just to have them in together. I thought it would be fun. I need to put another like uh, wooden doll or something in here to support these so that they can grow a little bit nicer. But I like the way that it looks together as a mixed pot. This philodent or this begonia goes wild. As soon as you have it potted in soil, you have enough like roots from a propagation to pot it in soil, it is going to explode. I love it. And I love how big the leaves are. 10 out of 10. And the backs are like beautiful red. Oh, I love it so much. So now we can go back into the bedroom and talk about the plants in there. There aren't quite as many in there, but there's, there's still, there's still a decent amount. So here, the first place into the bedroom, these are the plants that get the most think light. Right here is a philodendron goldii, which is actually not what it's called anymore. I think it's called a thematophyllum. Mm, can't remember. Um, it's not bipinatophytum. No, I can't remember. Um, it it took a it took a downturn after those days where things got really underwatered. It lost two of its leaves, and so now you can't even tell that it's like a philodendron goldii or whatever it's actually called. Right here is a fern leaf cactus and it is going off. There's so much new growth on this. There are some dark spots, which are basically from spots that I was like, oh my God, is that scale? And I was like digging my fingernail at the plant. And I don't think any of them were actually scale. So now I've just scarred the plant in a bunch of different places. Um, but yeah, so not ideal, but you know, sometimes that's just how it goes. And then back here I have my String of Hearts, trying to get her back to her former glory. She struggled a lot moving down into the apartment um, because it was not getting light from above or anything. And so totally restarted the plant. And this is where we're at. At some point soon-ish, I'll probably move it out to one of the shelves where the light is only, where it's like getting light from above and for the mid-strings. So maybe 
I'll move it to like this side of the shelf where, oh, I forgot to turn this light back on, where it gets light from above up there and then this light as well. That might, or maybe over like where the spider plant is. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Then on the lower part of this shelf, I have my Hoya Australis Lisa, this plant. It was so big and beautiful. And then I got like a smaller additional plant when I went to Houston last November, planted them together, lost a bunch of the plant, had to totally chop it up to save it. Um, so this is where we're at. And then every time new growth has started to come out, I've then been trash about watering it. So this plant and I are struggling a little bit, but we'll see how it goes. Then right here is my Hoya crony or Hoya, yeah, Croniana Eskimo. Yeah. So right there, this is actually, I think, the newest plant in my collection. And then here is my Philodendron Silver Sword. I chopped it up a while ago and it's working on a new leaf. Um, so that's exciting. Oh my gosh, my camera is about to overheat. And I'm inside. That's how hot it is. Here is my Philodendron Brazil in a Wally Grow planter. This doesn't really get much light. Um, it gets the reflection of the other grow lights. All right, I'm back. My camera has cooled. I have eaten breakfast. Anyway, like I was saying, this Swedish Ivy, it doesn't really get much light. I have the blinds closed because it's supposed to be hot as heck today. And I'm hoping that the blinds being closed helps provide a barrier to the heat coming through the glass. But it doesn't get a whole lot of light. It gets a little bit of the reflection above, a little bit of the reflection from the right, but not a whole lot of light. So it does fine. It's still grown a decent bit. Um, I definitely need to water it. There's some leaves that are not doing great. Those are probably going to die. Um, but this is a plant that I don't super love. Like if I had a place where I could just grow a huge trailing plant and just have it like up on like a podium or something, then I would love it. But I don't know. It just kind of hangs out there. <laughs> and then up on the shelf, let me fix the monkey. There we go. I have my Neon Pothos, which is doing so good. It's doing great. It's getting so full and there's a decent amount of trailing. I just kind of have it like wrapped up in the pot so that it still stays where it can get the light. Then next to it, I have a Raftophora decursiva or Dragon's Tail Raftophora, I think is the like common name for it. Um, I love this plant. I'm so excited for it to get bigger. I grew this from nodes. So this plant, so this plant is like a year and a half old at this point, but I grew it from nodes that didn't have any roots or leaves or anything like that. So that's why it's so teeny tiny. And then back here is my uh, Crassula Pagoda plant or a string of buttons, I think is also sometimes what it's called. It's wild, it goes everywhere. I should probably put it in a bigger pot because I have to water that thing constantly. And it also like up here where it broke, you can see several places where it broke. It literally broke just because it's so top heavy because of how long everything is. So <laughs> that's how long things are. There's like roots growing off of things. It's kind of wild and out of control. Next to it, I have my lemon lime philodendron and I have been cutting this back a lot just to try and get a nice full plant. And it is quite full on top. We've got lots of new growth. These are all old leaves that are just like probably ready to, to leave this world. Um, despite the fact that it's not really trailing that much, I am very happy with the way that it looks and the progress it's made this year. Next to that, I have my Rick Rack cactus. This has been putting off a lot of new growth lately, especially with this new grow light setup, um, which is really exciting. I did cut off all the really wide flat um, leaf paddle things a while ago because I was, again, really paranoid about scale. I just was, ugh. these these plants, this one and the fern cactus, like they just get a lot of weird little like dots on them like that or whatever, and it always looks like scale to me and I get super paranoid because I don't want to have scale. And so, yeah. <laughs> In the back right there, I just have the world's teeniest little Cebu Blue Pothos propagation thing going. And then to the right is my trailing jade. I think it's called Crassula jacobensii. No, Senecio jacobensii, I think. Um, but it's trailing jade and it's quite long, but again, I just have it all 
staying up on the shelf so that it can continue to get light. So that is a tour of my plants, my grow lights, everything like that in my little baby basement apartment. I hope you enjoyed. I have a handful of plants at my desk, but you don't have to worry too much about those. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.